Hi, I'm Paul Broussard. I'm with uh, DeVille Luxury Coffee and Pastries and uh, Chow Bazaar. Today, I'm going to show you how to make an amazing uh, traditional cappuccino. The one important thing to remember about espresso beans to make your traditional cappuccino at home is uh, to use a good quality bean and a bean that actually has the, uh, the roast date on it. So here you can tell that these ones were uh, roasted on the 2nd. Um, it's now the 16th, so that's 14 days old. 14 days is almost perfect for an espresso bean. Um, we never use espresso beans before they are uh, at least 10 days old and the reason for that is because they're quite gassy and volatile before 10 days and as they mature uh, 10 to 14 days is kind of its premium um, they uh, I guess kind of settle down calm down a little bit and their flavor shines through a little bit better a couple other things you're gonna need obviously a good grinder uh, you're gonna need a really good espresso machine and you're gonna need amazing water if you can use bottled water, that's what we recommend. For us, we have a water filtration system. I'll just kind of show you what that looks like. Um, we've got um, a crazy reverse osmosis remineralization water filtration system. Uh, and basically what this lets us do is dial in the water so that it behaves properly with not only the coffee, but the equipment that we're using to brew the coffee. If you've got a, a decent grinder, and uh, what you want to do is, is grind your beans fresh. Now at home, your espresso machine, when you turn it on, you might get a little bit of hissing. You'll see our water here isn't hissing, it's really hot and it's steaming. And we can actually tell you how hot that water is um, by looking down here. We know our water's at about 204.1. I don't know if you guys have got uh, thermometers at home and you wanted to do that yourselves. Uh, probably more consistent coffee if you know what temperature you're brewing at but basically the telltale sign is at home your water can't be hissing it'll burn the coffee now that we're ensured that our, our water isn't hissing and that's all ready to go we're actually gonna grind our beans so at home you probably won't have something this fancy but for us I hit a button and all the coffee that I need because I've spent some time dialing that in all day comes into there so what I want to do is I want to tamp this gently get any coffee that's kicking around there off of there and then I do a little polish that's what they call that before I stick it in I want to get rid of any of this kind of coffee that's kicking around here what I want to do is I want to make sure that uh, this porta filter head is all nice and clean so that when I put it up inside here no extra grounds that are kicking around on the ears is what they actually call these things okay. um, we don't want that to gum up the machine right so for us we do that a lot over and over again. So before I put that through, I'm gonna just run the water again just to make sure, double make sure that there's no extra grounds uh, in the group head. And then basically what I do is uh, get everything all nice and clean before I brew it. I'm gonna put a little caramel because that's how I drink mine. So I just put just a little bit of caramel in there, probably about a teaspoon. And then uh, I do a little pre-infusion here. You at home won't have that. Uh, but basically you'll brew your espresso the normal way that you brew it and so we're looking for nice slow long dark drips very slow to start with uh, and it kind of speeds up as you go along uh, we want to get about 27 to 30 seconds for a shot uh, it's about how long I've been talking here and I can notice by the fact that it's starting to go golden that that shots done we don't want too many um, bright notes in there. So if we look at that actually, if we look at that espresso, you can see how many different colors there are in there. Um, there's some bright notes, there's some dark chocolate notes, um, and uh, that's exactly what we're looking for. I'm just going to clean this out here. Basically I put a cloth over top of my steam wand, because if I didn't do that, you'll hear right at the beginning there's going to be some water in there. Now it's just steam. So now that that's done and I've cleaned off my wand, um, I'm going to position this so it's just below the surface of the milk and it's just kind of facing towards this pitcher. What I want to do is I want to extend it a little bit at the beginning so you're going to hear that shh, and then I'm going to sink the wand and just make sure that that milk is turning violently. So we're going to do that right now. Position my wand properly. We're going to go on about halfway. I want to hear that hissing and then I'm about done. And as soon as it's hot on my hand, it's hot enough for your mouth. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in there and just kind of mix that around. Introduce a little bit of the milk into the espresso so that I can actually do some art. So uh, I'm just gonna pour nice and slowly. A nice little stream, and this little stream's gonna eat up the little milk there. 
and then uh, when I want to make a design, I just make one. We hope you enjoyed this cooking tip on Chomp TV. We're continually updating episodes, so be sure to check back from time to time. If you liked any of the restaurants you saw in these episodes, they're just a mouse click away on chomp.ca.